We begin tonight with new signs of trouble before the tragic shooting of a Detroit police officer earlier this month. We want to welcome you to 7 Action News at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. Recorded police encounters paint a picture of a young man unraveling in the weeks before he opened fire on Officer Lauren Courts. All right, stop. And don't touch me, bro. Where is that illegal, bro? Where is that? But don't touch me, bro. Police body camera footage shows that 19 year old Imani Davis was deeply troubled and it was hardly the first sign. Seven investigator Ross Jones has the story you'll see only here on seven. About a month before he would gun down a Detroit officer, 19 year old Imani Davis came face to face with East Point police. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so let me go. You might as well let me go then. Is that a plan? And it's dumb got me. Why is he putting his hands on me, bro? Davis was seen fighting in broad daylight outside his family's East Point home. It would mark at least the seventh time he'd encounter police in less than four years. Yeah, like I said, I'll kill you. And on this day, Davis was shirtless and belligerent, arguing with family and officers. Bro, don't touch me, bro. I'm not playing, bro. Don't touch Under, me, bro. Like I said, you're going to get your food. Don't touch me, bro. You're not touching me. Bro, I don't hear, understand, understand this, bro. You know, my daddy, my mama, not nothing. According to a police report, Davis's mother had called 911 saying her son was irate and she wanted him to leave. I am willing to pack up his stuff as long as he leaves out of here. I do not want him in the house in his state of mind. Records show that as far back as 2019, his mother called police when Amani, then 16, was fuming, yelling and banging on the door, saying he wanted to move into foster care. It was then that his mom told officers he may have a mental disorder and wished to petition him to a hospital. Three years later, she would tell officers that the help she sought never came. Is he diagnosed with anything? Or? Yeah. Like I said, he's been having these problems since he was a kid, since he was a teenager, and every time I call the police, try to get help from the state, because he's not threatening to kill me or himself, or he's not on drugs, you guys, not you personally, yeah, they won't do anything. Everything's going on in this wicked with each new contact with police, Davis's unraveling becomes more pronounced. After a violent outburst in 2019, his mother called 911, telling officers she no longer knows what to do with him, that she tried sending him to boot camp and even dropping him off at the 6th Precinct in Detroit. A month later, records show Davis was transported by ambulance for a mental health petition. It is unclear if one was sought or granted, but months later, records show that Davis returned home after leaving Children's Hospital in Detroit. Then came allegations of attempted credit card theft, of fighting in the street, and being found with an illegal taser. To anyone who knew him, Davis's troubles did not appear to be a secret, not even to neighbors. We heard everything was going on. We always been like that. Davis would be arrested on this night in May, charged with disturbing the peace. What officers didn't know, just one day earlier, he'd walked into an East Point gun shop with a friend who, according to prosecutors, helped him buy this military-style firearm. Davis would obtain it days later. It was the same gun he would use to kill Officer Lauren Courts. When I spoke with Davis's brother outside his East Point home earlier this month, he told me his family struggled to find treatment options for Amani. There are no court records in Macomb County probate court we could find showing that Davis was ever petitioned for hospitalization, but he could have sought voluntary treatment on his own. Dave Carolyn. Wow, just heartbreaking to see that whole thing unfold in a young man who desperately needed help. Ross, thank you as always.